All right, good. Let's hitch a ride over to this other light that I have to fix. Starting to look factorious around here. I love it. Is factorious a word? Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to get our quartz production set up. Um, so, thanks, Doug. Doug gave us some motors there. Um, I have a couple things I want to show you. I have a, a little bit of controlled chaos going on right at the moment. I've made the decision to get um, going on uh, Phase 2, to finish Phase 2 so we can get into Tiers 5 and 6 which will give us access to things like the jetpack and the tier four logistics, uh, or I'm sorry, the Mark, uh, yeah, Mark four logistics trains and other things like that. Um, so I, I wanted to, I wanted to get that stuff. So it's available to us cause it's going to be, you know, too useful to, to wait too much longer on. And so to that end, what I did was I just did some temporary setups with some assemblers. Uh, this one's making versatile frames. We need a total of a thousand of these. Now I will, it's still my intention to set up a permanent versatile frames production because we're going to need 5,000 more of those, I think, for the next phase. Um, or at least maybe a semi-permanent, I don't know, we'll see. Um, so we have, uh, we already have all that we need, actually. But there's no harm at this point in letting it continue to make more because, again, we're going to need more. Um, so we have, we still have plenty of fr frames. It, it's the consumption is, what is it? It's uh, 6.25 per minute and we're producing five per minute. So this is very slowly trickling down, but it will be able to recover very quickly. And then the other thing that this is uh, using is steel beams. And that is 75 per minute. I don't remember how many we're producing per minute, but it is uh, definitely draining this pretty quickly. So we need to we need to stop it fairly soon, just so we don't completely run out of these. Of course, I also have um, 400 in the depot as well. And then the pipes are yeah, the pipes are starting to dwindle down a little bit. Uh, this machine over here is making automated wiring, and um, we have a, a lot. We only need a hundred, but again, this is another product that we're going to need a whole mess of just a crazy amount of for later uh, phases. So overproducing these at this point is not, not a bad thing at all. I think the cable, let's, well, let's take a look. Is the cable, yeah, the cable's keeping up with it pretty good. And then the stators I'm, is actually what I'm making with this machine here. And everything's uh, overclocked to the max too, just so we can make it as quickly as possible. The cable or, or the wire has no problem at all keeping up with that, and the pipes, like I said, are going down um, slowly, but we're in pretty good shape. Okay, so um, I think I think we have everything actually to finish out the space elevator. So let's do that now. We need, only need a hundred of these, and then we need a thousand of the versatile frames. I'm not going to keep that stuff there too much longer. All right, so let's see. We're going to need two and a half rows of this. Here, let's just let's just do that and then we'll actually if we put these three back, that gives us do I have the same amount of rows in my inventory. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, I've got nine. This is only eight. Okay, so that's 18, 19, 20. Okay, so that's a thousand there. Let's head on up to Le Space Elevator and uh, get into the next phase. Okay, here we go. Put all of those in and all of those in. Oh, that's cool. Love these new animations.
Lock that sucker in place. Welcome to the Project Assembly Pioneer Progress Presentation. Congratulations, the Phase 2 project part shipment is now ready for delivery. On delivery, Phase 2 will be completed and the construction dock will be constructed. After completion of Phase 2, the technologies of Tiers 5 and 6 yes. will become available in the hub. These might feel intimidating after your previous experience, but rest assured that you would not be here if you were entirely incompetent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Highlights are oil production, railway transportation, the jetpack, and many more. Completing Phase 3 of Project Assembly is your next main objective. Just remember to focus on producing and delivering the project parts, and fix its faith in you will be strengthened. <laughs> okay, nice. Let's do it. Let's see if we can remove fog so we can see what they're doing up there. Phase two of project assembly completed. You have been performing more adequately under pressure and are closer than ever to saving the day. Perhaps you were the right choice for the job. Time will tell. You will now enter phase three of project assembly. Continue as you are and there should be no issue. For humanity, for fix it. Look at that. That is cool, man. <laughs> I love it. Oh, we only need 2,500 more versatile frames. All right. I might actually keep that production going um, because it won't take that long, really, to get 2,500. And then we can load the space elevator up and be done with I don't think we'll need versatile frames for anything else after that. I'll, I'll double check that. Um, yeah. Okay. So maybe that's what we will do. I mean, we already have 390, or you know, to to put towards it. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll check and see if vers versatile frames are used for anything else. Because if they're not, then there's no point in setting up a permanent production. The uh, adaptive control units and the modular uh, engines, though, those are going to be a little more involved. Um, you know, I, w we'll see I, in terms of setting up permanent production. I think we need, I'm, I'm positive we need adaptive control units for later level phases. So that, you know, we definitely will. Modular engines, I don't think we do if I recall correctly, but, you know, we'll, we'll look into that and then, you know, plan accordingly. Excellent, guys. We are in phase three. Let's take a look at our milestones here. Um, so I want jetpack, I want logistics mark for those two in particular. Um, I'd like the manufacturer and obviously the train. And Mark II pipes would be nice. Oh, and the Mark II, yeah, I mean, we need all of it, right? <laughs> obviously we want all of it, so. Uh, let's, let's shoot for the jetpack first, though. Um, and we get extra inventory slots too. So we need 50 motors, a thousand cables, and a thousand plates. Do I have 50 motors from Doug? I have 24, okay. So we'll have to handcraft uh, another 26 of those, but we should easily have a thousand plates and a thousand cable. In fact, are those even, no, I only have 400 in the, in the depot, so. So we just need five stacks. One, two, three, four, five stacks of that. And for cable, we need one, two, three, four, five. That takes care of those items. Um, oh, does this, what gives us solid bio, or liquid biofuel? Fuel. Scannable resource. One bad thing about the Dune Desert, to my knowledge, is there's no oil around here, so we're going to have to go elsewhere for our oil needs. Unless, yeah, I don't think that's been changed. Where do we get... Here we go, fluid packaging. Yeah, we definitely want liquid biofuel 
for the jetpack. I mean, we can use other types of fuel, but liquid biofuel is the best. So this this will really be the next thing we'll go after. Uh, but it does require 200 plastic. And we can't really do plastic until we get oil going. So we'll just have to see on that. Um, Mark IV Logistics, same thing. We'll need rubber. So oil processing is going to be a very near future thing for us. For sure. Um, okay, so anyway, let's go back to here. Active milestone. And we just need to make 26 more motors. And what do I need? Oh, I need staters for that. Okay, well, guess what? We're making extra staters. Um, let's just grab a stack of those. I actually have some staters in here, too. All right, we have our motors. Let's get a jetpack, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. Milestone reached. Fixit has granted you the power of flight, provided you have a jetpack and the appropriate fuels. The jetpack refuels automatically while you are standing on a surface, and different fuel types will affect the jetpack's functionality. With this increased versatility, you will no doubt achieve efficiency levels previously unheard of. No doubt. Okay, so, um... We need, a, we need the packager to make the liquid biofuel. And we would need 200 plastic to do the milestone. We have 29 from Doug. Okay, so... I think we're going to have to rely upon either coal or solid biofuel until we can until we can do that so as far as making the jetpack what do we need we need five more motors beautiful okay let's make the jetpack and we will put that in our uh, parachute slot and we will tell it to use solid biofuel I guess that's the only option we even have at the moment okay yeah so the thing about the jetpack is if you if you let it go all the way out then you you fall and so we have to be careful of that Unlike the hover pack, which we'll get in the next phase, it, in the, with the hover pack, you know, it's got, like, propellers on it, right? And so um, you can glide to the ground if you lose power. But with this, we have to be careful. All right, so that means that we want to make sure we have... Well, I'm, I'm actually going to probably carry two full stacks of this since it burns pretty quickly. And I'm going to need to spend a little more time off camera gathering resources to, to really kind of ramp up our production. You know what I could do? Um, I don't think we need this much biomass. So what we could do is... Hmm, how do I, I, I don't really want to mess with this setup here. What if we, okay, what if we grab a, a storage bin and put it, let's see, where would we put it? That's, the, okay, yeah, we want the output to go here. Let me bring it up to there. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll grab a, let's get on the other toolbar here. Let's put a merger here. Really, you're not gonna snap for me? Oh, there we go.
And then what we can do is we can load um, some of this biofuel. So let's let's keep let's keep five stacks in there for now. And then the rest of this I'm just gonna throw in here. And that'll convert to solid. Okay. I might want to re rethink this design to um, to make that a little simpler, but this will work for now. Nice. Okay. That take care of that. Oh, guys, so nice to have the jetpack now. This is the only way to fly. Alrighty then. Let's see. Let's look at um, let's go milestones again. Uh, the the next thing. I need Mark IV, but we need rubber for that. We have 22 things of rubber. And that's just not, that's not something you can create. You can't handcraft that. You gotta have a refinery. So, all right, fluid packaging, petroleum power, that needs rubber and plastic. We might be blocked from the rest of this until we get some kind of oil going. Yeah, see that needs plastic. Trains need, train. oh, we could do trains. Because I can handcraft these. Of course, we need these. You know, we're going to mass produce these because we're going to need them for the Mark IV belts, among other things. Thing is, is, you know, our next big project is steel. And all the stuff that we need, all the resources we need for steel are going to be very near the steel plant. So we don't really need the trains yet. So that's not a... I can't say, you know, that that's a, a high priority at the moment. So the only thing that really makes sense for us to go for next is oil processing. And then we're going to need to leave the dune desert and go decide where where we want to do that. So I'm going to need to make um, motors encased industrials. We already have these two items. We need 500 pipes and 500 sheets. Those other things I'll, I'll make off camera. Let's see, sheets are here, I think. Yeah, so let's grab those. And then 500 pipes. We can get those loaded up anyways, those items. Okay. And like I said, I'll make the encased beams. Well, I already have 57, so let's just load those up now. I'll make those and these off camera just manually to get that going. But we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with this in this episode. So we'll uh, we'll do that later. We might. I'll tell you what though. We might I have to think about this. We might do. A, a small temporary oil production just so we can make you know rubber and plastic and get the liquid biofuel for our jetpack before we start our steel project we also have some cosmetics to do on the pyramid too I haven't forgotten that um, but uh, and, and what's really kind of holding that up is the quartz that's why I want to get quartz production going anyway all right I think we're ready to get to our main task for today which is setting up our quartz let's put the stator back in there and we just want to make sure we have items in our inventory that are not in the depot so they're available to us and we're gonna need a decent amount of concrete too so let's grab some extra I do have that in the depot but let's grab some extra of those maybe four more stacks oh we got more inventory slots too so that's nice Indeed it is. Where's rotors? Let's get an extra stack of, uh, or a full stack of rotors. We have a full stack of AI limiters. And I think we are good to go on everything else. That's not in the depot. Very good. Let's head on up this way. 
What we're going to do is we're going to... Okay, so the road... I think what we're going to do is we're going to remove these barriers here. Is that... Yeah, that's fine. And then starting... If, if we, yeah, I think we're going to clip into those. Okay. So what we'll do is starting here. Uh, let's remove all of this stuff here. Because we're going to build a, a, a platform over here for the truck station. Let's get... Uh, the two meter foundation and we're going to zoopity doop it down there we want it to go uh, we want it to be even with our conveyor road down there oh is it though is it going to be Oh, yeah. You know what? I think what we actually have to do for that to work is we have to put these back. And then run the foundations off of there. Okay, let's go one more. Looks correct. Okay. Then we'll run this to there, and we want to rail this up here. I thought about moving the sinks up on top of the platform, but I think I prefer to keep them where they are. Yeah, I think we'll just keep them where they are. Okay. Now, we want to run this all the way down to there. And we will put a floor hole in here. Okay, that looks good. And this can run back to the road. I am covering up this impure limestone node. <clears throat> I don't think we'll need it. We have plenty of limestone. Oh, incidentally, I did end up, you know, with the road that I built out to the north, I did end up covering an impure iron node. Um, and I figured, well, you know, that's certainly not ideal, but there is so much iron in this desert that it's unlikely we will actually need it. And if we do it someday... You know, we'll just have to divert the road around it. So, I'm not worried about it. I mean, it is unfortunate, but... Not... Not the end of the world, for sure. Alright, great. Let's, um... Let's grab some road barriers. In any place that well okay on second thought we can put the road barriers here but let's hold off on on putting them in place in the back for the moment And we want to leave these road barriers here just in case, you know, one of our vehicles got out of control, right? <laughs> As if that's going to actually happen, but, you know, we're trying to be somewhat realistic here. In fact, maybe even move that out a little more. Let's change these to concrete here. 
think I like that better. And we might, you know, once we unlock, um, uh, you know, paint and decals and that sort of thing in the awesome shop, which by the way, we have a lot of points. That's another thing we need to do is do some more awesome shopping. Um, it, it, maybe we'll paint this, you know, like a, as a crosswalk or something. Okay, good. We have completed that part of the equation. Okay, guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to go three foundations this way and stand on the seam between the third and fourth foundation. Grab ourselves a truck station. And we want this truck station to be centered on this seam here and then pulled all the way to the edge there. Uh, I haven't blueprinted any of this either because it's pretty pretty basic setup. So we're just going to build it straight up here. All right, let's line up on the fuel input. Grab ourselves a smart splitter. Uh, here, let's just do it this way. Uh, with the input coming from the west. And then we also want that to be in the center this way of that foundation. Next, let's grab a storage. And we want to put that right in between those guys, like that. And we'll run a belt into here, belt into here. We want to take another smart splitter, line up on this output, and also line that up there, but we want the input to be on this side and once again put down a, a storage here but going the opposite direction and we'll run a belt into both of those just so we get double the output from this and that looks good there okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab ourselves a sink and we're going to line that up to there. And maybe what we'll do is move that over a little bit so we have a little more breathing space. And we'll put the sink in. Now we're going to take a merger and put the merger here like so. Run a belt into there, run a lift, going from there to there and here to here, with the belt into the lift, and then this can go into there. Okay, so let's talk about what's happening here. This is going to feed coal off of our, our coal line down there into this storage bin and into the fuel uh, container here. <clears throat> and by the way, this needs to be set to unload too. So we got, don't, don't want to forget that. Um, so let's, let's get out here. Put that on Zoop. And we're going to run a lift down to the coal line. But here's the thing that we got to be careful of. Um, right now that coal belt is sending 240 coal per minute to our coal plant, and that's the exact amount that it needs. It's perfectly load balanced. Um, because we're going to start borrowing from it, even though, uh, you know, albeit in small amounts, we don't want to interrupt the, you know, that 240 per minute. So we're going to have to go increase the output a little bit, which we have. We, we can. We have 30 additional coal per minute that we can use off that line. Uh, so we're going to increase that. And then what's going to happen is the coal is going to come up in through here. It's going to fill this and fill the bin. And then when it overflows, we're going to send it out the right um, output. This can just stay on any, it doesn't matter, uh, to the sink. So that way we're not messing with our efficiency. Okay, so that's the plan for that. But we do need to go... Before we actually hook this up, we do need to go increase our coal. We'll do that in, in a moment. 
Now this is going to be receiving quartz from the truck, and this is basically going to be a buffer that will send the quartz out. Um, and we're going to set up some lines that come down and around and go over to there. But um, I'm just going to bring all of the quartz over here that we can from the from two normal nodes. Uh, so we have massive amounts of it. And the overflow will just go out the left side into the sink until such time as we need to, you know, increase our usage of it. But that way we have it coming in and it's available to us. All right, so that's how that all works. Now let's um, let's loop out here, and we're gonna put a lift here, but we're just gonna have that go right down to there. Okay, I'll tell you what. Before we go any further with that, let's go out. Uh, let's go out to the coal and get that going so by the time we get over here the line will be you know have the increase on it because again I don't want to I don't want to interrupt our coal plant the the reason why that's a somewhat of a big deal is the last two generators on both sides are just barely able to keep up with the coal input um, and if we interrupt that even just a little bit then it'll cause those guys to shut down uh, I mean ultimately they'll catch back up but I'd rather just not, you know, mess with that at all. Um, okay, I guess... I guess we don't really have a road going over there. I might... I might change that. I don't know. We'll see. But we'll just jetpack over for now. I am going to need to set up another coal power plant out on the coast for our steel factory. And I might... I might try and set that up with compacted coal. We have to unlock it, but the advantage of using compacted coal is that it uses basically half of the coal that a normal coal setup is. So it's more efficient, but it does require sulfur and more machines to be set up. So, you know, there is a bit of a trade off there. So right now you're doing 120. And both of these miners are just sharing the load. What we could easily do... Um, is this a Mark II? Yeah. We could easily clock this up to support the whole thing. Um, and we may end up doing that in the future. And then that would free up this coal node for, for something else. But for now, let's just keep it the way that it is. So we want to increase each one of these by 15 so we're sending the full uh wait oh we gotta i guess we're gonna have to put a shard in there so we're sending the full 270 down the line so we're basically sending 30 additional coal and that 30 coal is what will go into our truck station and our extra storage so we have um extra coal if we need it for anything Okay, so that makes the total of that amount 270. And that'll take a, a few minutes, you know, to get all the way down there. So that's why I wanted to get that started now. All right, I'll meet you guys back at the factory. I am planning on um, coming up with a parking solution. In fact, you know what we might... Maybe we'll just make that parking solution over here on our pad. Um, well, there's not a lot of room, but of course we could expand this. Let's just park the Explorer right here. We can actually expand this all the way over there if we wanted to. Maybe we will do that. We'll see. Back to this. Okay. Let's um, let's actually get the power hooked up next before we move on to the next part of this. Um, so we're going to grab a power line from you. And we're going to need to hook up to here. So let's line up on you. Now we'll face west and put you there. Shouldn't have any clipping issues. Okay, good. And then um, let's get up here for a second. We also have to power the truck station. If I run a line from here, does it clip? 
Nope. All right, I think we'll just do that. We'll keep it simple. Especially because if I do run this line and line it up over here, it might clip on the edge of this. So yeah, we'll leave it that way. Okay, that gets our sink up and running and our truck station. Now let's go ahead and get the quartz situation set up here. So what we have to do here is, let's go down below. We have to make sure that we don't go any further than uh, we have to be able to set a splitter, um, no, a merger on this belt and hook it up to the outputs of our constructors. So the, yeah, that should be right. Okay, so we'll just use this floor hole as a reference. Um, in terms of north and south, that's where it needs to be positioned. But we might, you know, we might move it east and west a little bit once we get up there and take a look-see at stuff. Oh, geez, I'm so used to liquid biofuel. This runs out so fast. I'm going to recharge. Okay, so we know that the output of our constructors has to be there. Right? Yeah, because the plan is to put the quartz product on this sushi belt, and we've already set up storage for it over there. So that's... that is correct there. Boy, that really... It's going to really have these constructors be pushed way out, though, isn't it? Hmm. Well, let's set them down and see what it looks like. Uh, I just had a thought, actually. Let's go back down here for a minute. Do we have enough room? No, we don't. Shoot. I was going to say we could maybe put that on the other side. Well, actually, maybe we do. Yeah, we could do it this way. That that gives us a little more north-south leeway up above. Okay. That's better. Let's grab ourselves a constructor. And we'll line this up here. I think my plan is to set three of these up. I want two producing silica and one producing quartz crystal. Uh, we need we're gonna need lots of silica for glass and stuff like that. Um, but why don't we hold this all out to here? I just want to see what our spacing is gonna be for three now. I do not like to put constructors so that these things clip. And I wish I wish they would have redesigned them so that didn't happen. Um, I know a lot of people will just bump them up together and not, you know, not worry about it. But that just you know, we we generally try not to clip stuff. We have a few exceptions to that rule, but and that's just not acceptable because in real in the real world those two arms would be banging into each other and yeah, not good. So, um, I mean, even here, you know, the, the line would be getting caught up with that. So that means this is as close as we can put them together if we don't want that to happen, which we don't. That's just how I roll, you know. Um, and it makes spacing with constructors a little bit more of a pain in the ass, but it is what it is. Okay, so we'll set this one to uh, quartz crystal. Wait, what the hell just happened there? And these two will set to silica. All right, now let's line up their floor holes.
Oh. I kind of move this one over. Let's also now do the inputs. We need to get power to these guys, uh, which is actually interesting because I have all the power on the other end. Uh, why don't we run power like this? Um, okay, so let's... Can I get all the way up here? Uh, nope, I can't. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, so we'll put that outlet there, and then... Let's remove this tile for a second. Now what we need to do is bring this down probably to the top of this one here. There we go. It takes care of the power there. Um, well, there, there's just no way I'm going to be able to get this perfectly vertical. It's just not going to happen. So we're going to, we're going to run with that. Because this, if we look straight up, it doesn't intersect anywhere along that, that pillar there. So we're going to call that good. Okay. Now let's go here. And what we want to do is turn it that way. Now, can we just snap mergers there? Oh, okay. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. So, and then we're going to need to uh, rerun these and we could just do this. Listen for the click. And we're good to go. Okay, so that hooks them up onto the sushi belt. Now, we need to do the same thing over here. So let's run some lifts down. this way and I think let's come over here make sure we're in straight mode and let's run this belt can we run it all the way underneath here and still have enough clearance oh yeah definitely okay so what we'll do then is we'll run it to, let's see. I think we're going to want it maybe to there. Well, yeah, we can slide it over this way further. Okay, let's run that all the way down there. Now we need splitters for this. And it, uh, oh, you sucker. Okay. Then let's hold this out a little further. Like to like to hear. Why? Why are you doing that? That one's. Oh, you know why? Because 
I think we're too close to the corner. Okay, that's easy enough to fix. Let's just bring this back to there. And if we take this belt back out and that lift and that belt. And then go into here. Now we should be okay. Beautiful. Okay, let's reset the lifts now. And we'll just do that from down here. Listen for the click. I think that's all we got to do on this end, guys. Oh, we got to get our coal set up. Okay, so we're now definitely... 30 over by by now on this line and the way you can tell that in case you didn't know is before every I don't know sixth seventh eighth whatever pile of coal there was just a little bit of a gap uh, but now it's completely solid and it will start um, backing up after everything all the buffers are completely filled up over there so now what we want to do is we want to split off of here and that is going to be a bastard and not line up. All right, so we're going to eyeball this one. And reconnect this lift first. Fortunately, we have a little bit of extra coal to play with, so if we interrupt this for a second, it's not going to be a big deal. Oh! Okay, I guess it did split. I thought I was going to have to reset the belt, but I, I don't have to do that. We're good. So, yeah, you know, one thing that is going to actually happen now that I think about this is until all of that fills up, we are going to be a little bit starved. Uh, oh, the these inconsistencies in the line, I think, are just due to my temporary setups over there. But let's see, we have... We have about 215 megawatts of elbow room here. So if a couple of those Jennies shut off momentarily, I don't think that'll cause a problem. If it does... I'll shut all of our temporary machines down until it stabilizes. But we do need to kind of be mindful of that. And here's the other thing too. We got to we're going to set up two Mark II miners and a truck station on the other end, which is going to require some more power as well. So, yeah, maybe what we'll do is let's just shut this off for now. And that means we can also shut off the stator machine. That just got, got us like 100 megawatts back right there because these guys are, ma you know, max overclocked. I want to keep these versatile frames rolling though, but let's take a look at our, excuse me, our steel beam situation. Go. All right, well, we're going to have to shut that off, too, and let those build back up. Because this is all just ad hoc stuff, right? And I, I didn't build any of this to support it, so it will eventually drain our stock, and then we have to give it time to build back up. How many frames do we currently have now? Let's take a look. All right, so we've got... Damn near have a 1,000 already. Good. Okay, so we're 40% of the way there, maybe? But that gained us uh, around a excuse me, 150 megawatts of power back, so we should be fine now. So, let's see. Uh, no, we want to look at consumption. Oh, so we have almost 500 megawatts. We don't count this because we have those machines turned off, but 
those machines, I believe, are factored into that. Right. Okay. So we should be good. Let's see here. Um, we are going to need to queue up some stuff. So we're going to want to put two Mark II miners in a truck station. So we'll need encased industrial beams, uh, a total of 20. I'll just handcraft those. We're going to need four portable miners. I have seven in here, so that's perfect. And um, how does our buffers look? Okay. I, th I think we, we, we should be good on, on product. If not, well, we're making a trip back here. Here's the thing, though. I actually need to, to get power run out to there. Ultimately, we would do that by connecting our lights, which will also double up as a power main line along the road. But do I want to do that now and add all of these lights to the grid? Does it... It doesn't tell us what the power draw is. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. It does not tell us what the power draw is of these lights. Let me look that up real quick. All right, so according to the wiki... These streetlights use one megawatt per light. Um, so I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's get, uh, let's get it in our Explorer. And I'm going to see if I can get at least a rough estimate of how many lights we would be adding to the grid to get out to the quartz. I'd like to do that now if we have enough power to do it, only because we're going to have to do it eventually anyways. But we don't have to connect all of them. We just have to connect enough to get to the quartz. So that means we would start probably with maybe this light here. Okay, so one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fifty-three. Okay, so um, that's the fifty-third light that I counted in the corner there. So that would be fifty-three megawatts. Um, and we probably would want to put one more here too. And let's put one. Here as well. So that would so that's basically 55 megawatts of power just for the lights. But it does, like I said, it runs a power line down here for us, so we kind of kill two birds with one stone. I I think I think we can handle that. If we uh I should have checked to see what we were using on the on the truck station, but I guess we can set it. Maybe set it down on this end. Uh, let's see. Production. Minor two. I'm not going to overclock these. We're just going to run. Okay, so we got 15 megawatts. So that means there, it's going to be 30 megawatts for both miners and... Twenty megawatts, so fifty. So two of those is thirty plus twenty is fifty plus I said fifty-six on the light, so one hundred and six. Yeah, we can handle that because we have about five hundred megawatts of headroom there. <laughs> uh, okay, that happened because we sucked too much coal off the line. Damn it, Jim. Well, I'll tell you what, I gotta run wiring back there anyway. Um, 
No, I, I need to get this back online first. I don't want stuff to be offline for so long. All right, I'll get this fixed, and then I'll bring you guys back here after I... What I'll do is I'll get the power back up and running, and then I'll run all the lines along the streetlights out here. And we're just going to do, you know, the west side for now. All these lights will eventually be hooked up. And then um, I'll bring you back when we're ready to build out our quartz on the other end. All right, guys, I just want to uh, point something out to you. This is very important. Um, I forgot to set this up as a smart splitter. Um, what I should have done is put this in as a smart splitter right from the get-go instead of just a normal, and then set the overflow to go out the right. Um, and then this wouldn't have happened at all because the coal would have kept flowing and it only would have started feeding coal up there once that extra 30 coal started to back up the line. So that's what I should have done, uh, but because I didn't do it that way, now I get to babysit my coal plants until all of the buffers fill back up and we're back up to normal, so yay me. Uh, anyway, I'll get that done, and then um, when everything is back up and running the way that it should be, I'll meet you guys back over once again at the quartz, and we'll continue on. Okay, guys, we are uh, back over at the quartz, so let's get this set up, and then we'll be good to go. Um, I also I made a, a tractor and drove it out here as I ran all of the lines, too, so that way we can record our route on the way back. Let's grab some foundations here, and we'll put those on the grid and just zoop them that way, and... We'll just pave this whole area here. Well, we might need to leave that off of there for a moment. Okay, let's put our, our miners down. So we want the miners to go, mm, actually, uh, if I set it this way, it doesn't leave us a lot of room. Okay, I think I'm going to have it actually point this direction. This one can point this direction. Okay. Uh, this, these are both normal nodes, by the way. Both of them are. So, in case anybody was curious about that, I hear a bad guy somewhere. Of course, bad guy, you know, being subjective. I'm really the invader here in Massage 2ABB. I think that's the name of the planet. But hey, it's not my fault, it's Fix its fault. And it's the Earth's fault for just about going extinct. Right? So that, that's my excuse. Okay, so, um, I think we'll just run this to there, maybe. I haven't really pre-planned this part out. I'm just kind of winging it here, so bear with me. I'll just run that into the terrain. Okay, so over here, we're going to have to do this and one more so we have a smooth transition onto the pad. That ought to work. Okay, so let's see. The tractor's going to come down the ramp, and I think what I wanted to do is come down here, drive maybe to here, stop, load, and then circle back around this way and come up there. All right, so that being the case, we want the truck station uh, to be this way. Oh, you're kidding me. I don't have modular frames in the depot either. Uh, do I have, oh, actually, we can make, we can make those. Uh, crafting bench. How many did it say I needed again? Uh, I need five more. Okay. 
The reason I'm short on that is because I made the tractor and I hadn't factored the tractor in when we did our to-do list on this. Let's grab the truck station and uh, let's see. We're going to come down around. I want it kind of in this off to the left a little bit so there's room for the truck to do its little curve. Let's freeze it there for a second. I think that's probably good right where it is. Let's go with that. We're not uh, worried about hooking fuel up to this end because it took about 23 coal, I think, to drive out here uh, in the tractor. And it holds 100. So that means it'll be four, it'll consume 46 on a round trip and still have over half a tank left. But it'll refill uh, at the at our factory okay this is a load so that's that's good and now we just need to hook up the inputs so why don't we just run a belt out of you into here uh, guess it doesn't like being that close so let's run it out to here first Oh, that's not what I wanted you to do. Did I not? Oh, I don't have it in straight mode. That's why. There we go. Good. Let's raise this one. Uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just use a lift for this one. Let's see, we want to line up here. And it doesn't quite make it to that spot. What if we what if we put a, a conveyor pole right here? Can we get it to here? Yes. Oh, except for that's too high. Wait, is it? Uh, oh, all right. Hold on. That's, that's level. That is, did I raise that up when I put that there? No? Okay, yeah, that's right. I just went too high. No, I didn't. It's going, Now it's going down. Uh, damn it, Jim. All right, you know what? We're going to do this differently. We're going to... It is on the thing there, right? Let's, uh, let's do that. going to do is we're going to go one, uh, two, three, four. There we go. That should be good. this should be well here we'll put a support on this end just for aesthetic reasons okay I like that I think that works Let's just go ahead and fill that in, too. Now, if I come down here at some point in the Explorer and want to just get on the ground, 
and go this way. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess we would drive around this way to get past all of this stuff. Let's just put some ramps here. All right, that's good. And then if we want to get out on this side and drive off into the wild blue yonder, or in this environment, orange yonder, we'll get to you there. And uh, maybe right there. Okay. Let's go ahead and put some rails down here for safety. Can I nudge that? Yeah, see, it doesn't... It nudges horizontally. It doesn't keep the angle. Well, you know what, though? I mean, this is far enough down to where it's not super dangerous, so... We won't worry about that. Now we need to get power down here. Um, maybe. What do I hear? Do I hear a slug or? Sounds like it's right here. Is there a cave underground? There must be a cave under here. Well, there's a cave here, but it doesn't go. I don't think it goes down that way. Oh, it does. It does go that way because last time we were down here, we didn't have our, our Nautilus yet. We just got sidetracked, ladies and gentlemen, but man, I need some Mercer spheres like crazy. Of course, we can always use more slugs, too. Look at this. I've never even been in here. Not even an update. Oh, this is cool. Uh, not even an update 8. I don't think I came in here. Do we have any bad bats? Oh, yeah, we have bad bats. Okay. Okay. Okay, that one's good. Where'd the other little bastard go? Oh, there's two little bastards. Three. Got him. You know, we could get some uh, mycelia from those coral thingies, too. There's not a whole lot of that in the desert. And some wood branches. Where does this go? Nowhere. Okay. All right. That was great. Um, I think because mycelia is kind of semi-rare, I'm going to stay here and harvest it, and I'll grab all of the this other biomaterial, too. So I'll see you back up there. Okay, that was a fun little distraction. So here's what I think we're gonna do here is let's go ahead and
I don't think I've been up on this ridge. Actually, I was on update 8, but I haven't been in this playthrough. No, that's not. That's not what we want. Okay, so, so let's run a power line up to here and make sure it's lined up with that. Okay. I just didn't want to run it through the cliff and I didn't want to run it around the cliff. So that's why we're doing it this way. And then you, can you do that without clipping? Yeah, you can. Here we go, we're all powered up, nice. And I did set you to load. Well, actually, it's it's set to load by default, so. Okay, so we are producing 240 quarts per minute. Um, what we could actually do, and probably even should actually do now that I think about it, is we should probably put a sink on this end, too. Yeah, that's going to fill up quickly. I think that's going to fill up be before one tractor can keep it emptied. And then we could even run multiple tractors, but we don't have, you know, we're not going to have a seriously heavy demand for quartz at this point. So I don't think we need to do that yet. Um, yeah, so let's get a sink in the mix here. Um, where do we want to put that? We have a lot of room right here. So yeah, why don't we do that? Let's get a sink. Um, hopefully I have everything I need for it. Yeah, we do. And we'll just line it up right on this seam here. Maybe bring it back to there. Let's put a merger here with the output going into the sink. Um, now, what we'll have to do here is put one, two, three, four, put you there. splitter here. You're going to line up. Oh, look at that. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Except for this needs to be a smart splitter. You'd think after my snafu earlier, I'd not make that same mistake again. And then we just need to put overflow on the right. Same thing here. Uh, this needs to be a smart splitter. And it lines up. And let's see, input, so overflow on the left. Tell you what, man, smart splitters in this game are the best thing since sliced bread. Or sliced quartz, if quartz can indeed be sliced. Uh, okay, yeah, I think we're good. So let's get some power to you. I think what we'll do is we'll get lined up right on you. Face west. And you were, I think you're on the seam here. Now, 
Now that does add a little more power to our setup here, but I wish it told us what the what the draw of the sink is. I, maybe it's. I wonder if it's variable depending upon how much stuff you're feeding into it. Let's look at our our power here. Um, okay, so we're consuming 10,061. We have 1,500. So we're still still 439 ish. I think everything is good. That little blip there was just when the that turned on momentarily to eat that little bit of quartz. Last thing to do for this task is set our truck route. I'm going to just do this with one tractor for now, but like I said, if it becomes apparent that we don't have enough quartz coming in, I can always add another tractor to the mix. But let's just go with one for now. Let's start the recording right here. All right. Start recording. So the truck will come down here. Oh, that pole is not in a good spot. I'll press F to load. I'll come back and move that pole out of the way later. Then we just basically drive back. Easy peasy. I have one light there that I got to set to night mode. I'll do that later. If I stop driving, then it'll set a pause marker, and then I'll have to remove it. So, not that that's a big deal, but might as well not do it if we don't have to. Okay, press F to unload. Back around the other way. There we go. Okay. Save path. Uh, we'll just call this the quartz route. Save that. Let's turn off the path markers. Uh, we don't need this move parts anymore. Oh, why doesn't it let me delete that? I don't know. Huh, that's weird. Okay, I want to. I'm not gonna set that. <clears throat> excuse me, to autopilot until I fix this issue here. What we can do here is just run diagonally to there. That's not a problem. Maybe what we do here is we cut across here if we can do so without clipping. I think we can. Oh, I forgot to hook that up. Yeah, that'll work. All right, let's turn this on to autopilot and let it do its thing. Just watch it for a second here, make sure everything is good. The thing about these truck routes, though, is that I haven't really observed them in 1.0, but in update 8, when the player was in the area, they could really do some weird shit. So hopefully, hopefully they um, are, ha ha you know, they've improved that. But 
if it does get screwed up somehow, what it'll do is it'll it'll kind of teleport after a few moments to correct itself. All right, good. Let's hitch a ride over to this other light that I have to fix. Starting to look factorious around here. I love it. Is factorious a word? <laughs> so far, it seems to be seems to be pretty smooth, even with with me around it. So, hopefully, they have definitely improved all of that. I had I had to manually place that light, so that's why it's not in night mode. All the lights in my blueprint, though, uh, were set to night mode. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are finished with this episode. So the plan for the next episode is going to be to build our road down to the waterfall to our steel factory location. we got to get that done. That shouldn't take too long, though. But before we start our, our steel build in earnest, we need more power. Um, so my plan is to build a pretty substantial coal power plant on the coast and if it's feasible to do so I want to make it a compact coal factory um, we have we have a pure sulfur node over there uh, or over there somewhere it should ping in a second yeah right there uh, let's see what's that oh that's a pure as well oh nice uh, where's that next one? Okay, good. It's better to have it down here, though. And what is that? That's a normal. All right. Um, oh, I got some stuff that I got to go pick up. So this would be, this would be the one to use. So maybe what I might do, I mean, it all depends upon how the numbers work out, of course. But what I might do is I might see what my maximum capacity can be on a normal sulfur node. Uh, because there's coal all over the place. I'm not really too concerned about that. Um, you know, we got nodes like here. We've got, like I pointed out earlier in this episode, we could free up one of those if we needed to. We got nodes right there. I don't know if they're going to ping, but we have, uh, we have coal over here somewhere. And we have coal down on this beach here too. So there's a lot of coal around. So we might set up our our next power plant based upon the maximum capacity we can get out of that normal sulfur node. Uh, and that could include overclocking too. I mean, overclocking almost makes the most sense to do at a miner. So, you know, if we put a, a Mark II miner on a normal node and overclock it to the max, I think we get 300 parts per minute, I think. If I remember right. Um, and so, you know, 300 sulfur per minute probably would allow us to make a pretty decent chunk of compact coal. And that, in turn, will dictate how many power plants we can then do. But look at this. We got quartz going, ladies and gentlemen. That one's already full. That one's already full. That one's already full. <laughs> nice. Very nice indeed. And then, of course, this is all coming along the sushi line here. And I believe I already set these two up to receive quartz crystals. And so, oh my god, this is filling fast. We might need to, yeah, we might need to double up on that one. All right, guys. Well, yeah, so again, upcoming stuff. Cosmetics for the pyramid. So we'll probably start the next episode by buying some stuff uh, off the store. But we'll do that in the next episode because uh, we need to wrap this one up. So cosmetics for the pyramid, finish the road to the steel factory, set up a larger compacted coal coal power plant in preparation for then building our steel uh, factory. That's what's on the list. 
thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. And I need to find my lizard doggo. See you guys later. Bye-bye.